I've always felt that bus stop signs could be a lot better. So for this video, I'm taking matters into my own hands. I have a problem with bus stop signs. A bus stop sign really just tells you one thing, what buses stop here. But there's a critical piece of information missing. Where are these buses going? If I'm traveling to somewhere new, I have no idea which bus to take based on the signage available. The 7, the UBC 4, or UBC 14. There's just no way to tell. Now, this bus stop design is pretty standard for pretty much any bus stop anywhere. But for me, it's especially disappointing to see it being used in some of the busiest bus stops in the country. Case in point, this bus stop on Barrington Street in Halifax. It has no less than 21 different bus routes going through it and zero instructions on where any of them are going. The result of all that, I think, is a transit system that can be difficult and intimidating to navigate. But it doesn't have to be this way. Take for example, the subway. As soon as you enter a station, you're greeted with signs and maps everywhere, helping you find your way around the system. The signs tell you what stops are ahead of you, while the maps help you understand where you're going within the network. To me, this is proof. Proof that transit signage can be clear, well-designed, and most importantly, helpful for navigation. So that got me thinking, if we can do that for the subways, why don't we do that for the buses? How about, I tried designing some bus stop signs of my own. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, uh, we have phones now, this isn't a problem. Well, I could reference the plethora of accessibility issues that come with phones, the risks associated with mass reliance on digital technology, the concerns around privacy, but ultimately, come on, just let me have my fun. <clears throat> so behold, my creations. The new and improved, the harder, better, faster, stronger bus stop sign, at least in my opinion. These are all based on real bus stop signs in the real, non-metaverse world. This first one is for a bus stop on Granville Street in Vancouver. Like the original, it lists all the buses going through it, but the key difference is this map. It tells you where you are and where each bus route can take you from that point. If you need to get to Carisdale, you know to take the 16. If you want to head to Kitts, you can take the 4 or the 7. The next three are a set. They're meant for this bus exchange in Richmond. This is a situation where there are not just multiple different bus routes, but also multiple different bus stops. So I thought that having signs at each bus stop, each with their own map, would be especially helpful here. And finally, we have that infamous bus stop in Halifax. And uh, this one was a doozy. It's hard enough to fit 21 different bus routes on a sign in general, but still, I found some room to make improvements. Many of these buses actually only run during rush hour, and they head straight to communities outside of Halifax without making stops in between. So in this case, I made two different signs, one for the rush hour commuter buses and another for the regular buses. So with these designs finished, it was time for some public feedback. Very helpful. It's um, the color coding. I, I love it. Um, I love how it points out like all the individual like kind of key points. This is really helpful. It shows people where they need to go. Got a broad overview of what we have going on in the transit system. I it's a good it. idea. Is this your bus? I don't want to make you miss it. <laughs> I was gonna catch this one. Okay, then how about you board it? Thank okay, you so much again. You. Now, as much as I love sweet, sweet validation, I still have a lingering question. Why aren't bus stop signs like this more popular? Why is there so little signage to help people navigate the buses? Well, there's the obvious answer. This takes a lot of work. Making these designs took a dumb amount of time, and that was for like five signs. That kind of effort might be justified for a subway station because there are just way more people using them. But for a bus stop, it might be a bit too much pain for too little gain. At least, that's what I originally thought, but it turns out that's not exactly true. This map helped me see this differently. 
It shows the number of passenger boardings at every bus stop and SkyTrain station in Metro Vancouver. The bigger the circle, the more passengers. What immediately catches my eye is that many bus stops are just as busy, if not busier, than the SkyTrain stations. In fact, you can see that the vast majority of transit trips here are taken on a bus. You'll find a similar story across the country. If you look at the numbers, buses actually make up a huge part of transit ridership in every city. In Toronto, the humble bus is just as popular as the subways. And in Vancouver, Edmonton, and Ottawa, they make up the vast majority of transit trips. The only exceptions are Calgary and Montreal. To me, those numbers paint a different story. While the vast majority of public transit riders use the buses to get around, most of our efforts in improving signage go towards other forms of public transit. I think that's more than just a matter of cost. I think that's a difference in priorities. I've covered transit issues for a while, and one thing I've noticed is that buses are often overshadowed by other, more flashy forms of transportation, like trains, ferries, or hyperloops. You know, the things that draw ribbon-cutting ceremonies, press conferences, and politicians. Buses? They don't get those things. In fact, if they receive anything, it's stigma. I've heard them described as second-rate forms of public transit, something you only take if you absolutely have to. And I can't help but wonder if our indifferent attitude towards buses keeps us from making them a lot better. Because at the end of the day, it's the buses that are moving the majority of public transit riders in this country. And I think we could make a world of difference to a lot of people if we improve the experience of riding those buses. Maybe it could start with a sign.